Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. And thanks for those great presentations from everyone. Uh, I think we sort of saw two themes going through these presentations. One is that we need a national infrastructure bank to provide adequate financing. Without that adequate financing from the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, we would not have been able to do all those wonderful things that the, the speakers described. A second thing is we need an institution to do the mobilization and planning. Uh, that was a big feature of the RFC. There was careful, careful one-on-one -on -one planning between uh, Hopkins and Jesse Jones and FDR. They would meet every day and plan on what their bottlenecks were and what they needed to move forward. So that's what we also need today. So if, if we could put up, pull up our first, uh, my first slide. So uh, where are we today uh, with our financing? Uh, one thing that we know is that we've just passed the uh, Infrastructure and Investment and Jobs Act, or otherwise known as the Senate Bipartisan Bill. Uh, that's great. We're so glad that the government was able to do this, but let's really, really be realistic. It will only provide $550 billion of new money over the next five years, and that's only one-tenth of what we need. Our real need is a minimum of $5 trillion. And that's what the engineers have cataloged as what we need, $2.6 trillion to fix transportation projects, drinking water projects, make sure that the power grid is secure. In addition, we need 21st century new types of infrastructure, including um, a, a high-speed rail network across the United States to solve our traffic congestion problems, uh, to uh, save us uh, uh, on energy to really reformulate how we move people around the country. Uh, we need a renewable energy grid overlay to move renewable energy. For example, we're producing a lot of it in the state of New Mexico, but we have no way to move it east and west to uh, end users. And we have a terrible water drought problem in the United States uh, for which we need to really get water into drought stricken areas just the same way that uh, Oklahoma and the Dust Bowl were addressed by the RFC and the Farm Corporation uh, financing. We also need to get water into those areas. Otherwise, we're going to have severe uh, price increases in food and we need affordable housing. We just are very, very short on affordable housing. Um, it's been critical uh, in certain states like California has the, is ranked 49th for the number of housing units per population per head. Uh, and this has caused big, huge homelessness problems. The same in Florida. Uh, we have uh, housing shortages all over the place. We need to have better housing, better electric grid, get people to work uh, easier. And the National Infrastructure Bank is geared up to finance all of those. So let's look at the next slide and see where we're falling short on a state-by-state -state basis. Uh, this first line shows what uh, different select states might get uh, from the National Infrastructure Bank. And it was calculated as just simply a, a crude uh, ratio of their population to the total population, uh, matching that up with the $5 trillion the bank will provide. So a state like California, for example, would be the largest beneficiary, could get up to $588 billion from the National Infrastructure Bank. So what's been promised to California from the IIJA? Uh, an, an article in uh, Cal Matters uh, newspaper said it would only total $48 billion for the whole state on a per capita basis. That provides California with less financing than Alaska or Vermont, for example, and will not be anywhere near enough to meet their needs for road construction, for bridges, um, fall short, uh, and there's nothing in here uh, significantly at all for high for affordable housing and a very small dollop of money for broadband. So we're not going to be moving into the 21st century with this financing for California. Let's take New Mexico next. They could get up to $33 uh, billion from the National Infrastructure Bank. Uh, uh, Senator Tallman in New Mexico tells us that really the state has not had investments since the Art Reconstruction Finance Corporation and the CCC and WPA put projects back in there uh, at the time of the Great Depression and has had no uh, investment since then. Uh, the, the state has 20% of folks that don't have access to affordable 
broadband. Uh, their roads are severely uh, in a state of disrepair. Uh, farmers, bridges uh, have to drive miles out of their way to get their produce to market and a huge water shortage that is really affecting agriculture in the state. That same, same thing applies to California. So we'll be able, the National Infrastructure Bank will be able to provide 10 times more money than the uh, IIJA uh, Act would provide. The same is true for Pennsylvania. Could the, that state could get up to $220 billion uh, uh, over the next 10 years to solve all of its backlog of projects. And we've been encouraging and trying to encourage uh, legislators in every single state we've talked to, to please, Come up with your list of projects. Uh, when the bank gets started, we'll put them up online, as uh, Dr. Hubbard has said, and get a rolling uh, stock of all these projects, uh, backlog of projects that we could start dealing with right away. And of course, among them is critical to end this problem with uh, lead service lines in older cities. Uh, the, the 15 billion that's in the uh, IIJ Act for lead service lines would maybe cover the city of Chicago, but it's not going to be enough to cover every single city in the United States that has terrible lead line problems. And these have been going on for decades now. We really need as a matter of safety and urgency to fix this. We have to address our electric grid. There's very, very little in here for the, you can't even see uh, an electric grid line, line here on this table from the IIJA. They're not, the, uh, we need to pay attention to that as a matter of priority because if the grids go down, if we overburden them from new electric vehicles or uh, bringing on high-speed rail, uh, that's not going to be enough. We, we need to make sure the grid is secure. And then finally, high-speed rail is our ticket to solving um, congestion, uh, traffic congestion problems and boosting our economy. All of these things are needed and can be provided by the National Infrastructure Bank. Thanks very much.